Hey guys, we're currently on our way to get a Welsh dresser that I bought on Gumtree. Um, really excited to see what it looks like, so come along with us. So, Welsh dresser. Um, so excited, it's got little parts um, where you can put, stack the plates and hang. Um, it's a little bit um, bruised, as I'd like to say, um, but quick sanding um, and then we're good to go. So. Hey guys, so I'm basically just about to take off the knobs before I get going because obviously I don't want to get paint on them and it will be just so much more hassle. Thing I've learned from upcycling is that if you keep everything in a little bag, um, just keep all, keeps it all safe. I've lost so many things. Um, at a time, um, not doing that. The first thing you need to do before even putting on the primer and undercoat um, is to use knotting solution. I use it um, and a lot of other people will because in a few years you don't want to have the knots in the wood. Um, sometimes they bring out a bit of a yellow um, and it will just come through the paint so literally get an old brush not even a very good one and literally what you need to do is just put it always all like to, on. before I get down to the primer I always and um, coat it um, I always like to use um, this is just sugar soap so it's literally um, just gonna help make sure that everything's clean um, but yeah definitely use something like that um, just to clean it because there's been, if you think, and you haven't sanded it, if you think how much dirt and things have got onto it, you don't want to paint it and then in the next few weeks the paint starts coming off. Because so after you're happy with the cleaning and the knotting solution onto it, um, it's now time to paint. Um, so let's see how it goes. The paint I use normally is a primer and a coat for wood. Right, so there you have it. Um, my first coat of primer. Um, an undercoat already so it probably takes um a little to i'd say five to eight hours so to just make sure it's nice and dry so after um i finished sanding the main things that needs to be sanded before i start actually putting the farrow and ball paint on um, I literally use um, a thin piece of sandpaper which is P120 um, just to sand down um, any lumps bumps or anything in the primer and undercoat right so I'm just about to paint I use farrow and ball I don't know if you can see it's kind of got a bit of Tape on the side, but it's Farron Ball Perbex Stone um, number 275. Right, so the first coat on everything is done. Um, I'm not going to do any more painting over the second coat tonight. Um, so just before I go in um, for the night, one piece of advice, <laughs> I've got paint on my nose, so funny. Um, one piece of advice is when you are painting, do it really thin. Um, even when I used to to like paint in the, the, the beginning I used to do it really thick to minimize um, the time and the coats but honestly it's just not good don't do that um, 
it's really bad for the paint, it's really bad for the wood, it just doesn't come out as nice. Um, I know it doesn't take as long, but then there's more chance of it, um, there's more chance of it peeling, it's, there's more chance of it scratching easy, just honestly, thin layers. Hey guys, so um, it's the morning, everything seems pretty dry. So it's ready for its second coat, but what I tend to do as well is take the masking tape off of the lines at the top where I want the wood to stay the same, just so that the second coat is nice and in line as well. I find if you leave it on and then after um, you finish, you, you peel it off, you kind of take some of the paint with you. See guys, <laughs> masking tape is literally a skill in itself. If you've got children, <laughs> probably try and do it when they're asleep. So now I just need to give it a quick brush inside and out um, and then I'm going to add, if you can see, teak oil, love teak oil, um, I always use it with like a sponge, um, some people can wear gloves or anything but I don't, um, and then afterwards, where is it, afterwards um, use beeswax. <laughs> you need to make sure that it's sanded down um, before you put the teak oil on because I'm ready to protect the wood now. <laughs> so don't do what I've done and just completely waste half your bottle of teak oil on the floor. <laughs> um, so anyway, moving on from that. So I'm literally going to protect the wood now. It's a little, um, the wood's gone a little bit boring and dull so I'm just gonna make it look all pretty again so we've sanded the whole part and if you look the colour just changes still quite light I still like to keep it really light um, roughly the natural wood but again you want it on the soft side and yeah, you're just going along. So, I'm pretty happy with it. It's just got to dry now. And then we'll put it all together and see how it looks. So I find this a little bit weird, but so-called brass cleans in tomato ketchup. Right, so the tomato ketchup actually worked amazing. Um, so basically, um, what we need to do now is I'm literally going to put liming wax on to protect it. So if you get anything on it, it's literally going 
going to be able to um, come off easy when you wipe it. These two beeswax um, bry wax. I love this one. It's like a cheaper version. This one comes out. It's meant to be um, medium um, oak type thing, um, but I really love this one. Like this. So we've already done the tea coil, and now we're just going to make sure the wood is fully protected. Let's get decorating. Mm -hmm. 